In this video, we're going to take a look at a form of relief printmaking commonly referred to as lino cut. Let's take a look at a few of the things that you'll need. First, of course, you'll need a bit of linoleum. You can pick this up at the local art store. You'll need a few cutting tools to cut the linoleum. We'll also be using block printing ink. We'll be using the water-based ink. And paper. Rag paper is preferred, but any paper will work. Soft graphite, which is optional. We'll be using it to transfer the image. A glass plate on which to put the ink on. A brayer or a roller. And either a wooden spoon, a printing press, or a baron. Here's a look at the linoleum that I picked up at the local art store. In this case, the top portion is a piece of linoleum and it's been adhered to a block. This makes it a bit easier to work with. I've also went ahead and created a sketch using only lines on a piece of paper that's exactly the same size as the linoleum. Since we've created a separate sketch, we can easily transfer this sketch to the linoleum surface ensuring that we don't spend a lot of time sketching out our idea on the linoleum surface. To transfer the image, we'll use a bit of soft graphite. In this case, I'm using a General's Layout Pencil, which is about equivalent to a 4B pencil. We'll apply graphite to the entire back portion of the drawing, and then we can apply the drawing directly on top of the linoleum block. We'll use a bit of masking tape to adhere it in place so it doesn't move once we start the transfer process. Once our drawing is secured to the linoleum block, we can use a harder lead pencil or perhaps a ballpoint pen to trace over all of the lines of the drawing. The pressure that is placed on the pencil or the ballpoint pen will cause the softer graphite that we applied on the back of the drawing to be transferred to the linoleum surface. It's important to understand that the drawing that we create, well, the finished block print rather, will be the reverse of the drawing that we've created. It's especially important to be mindful of this if you have letters or numbers in your drawing. Now we can remove our drawing to find that our image has been successfully transferred to the linoleum surface. Now, before we start cutting the block, we need to think about how our finished print will be translated. Most of us are accustomed to creating dark marks on a white surface. Most drawing papers, after all, are white, and most mark-making materials are dark. This means that we may have to think in reverse in some situations. Remember, the areas that we remove will not receive any ink, so they'll be the color of the paper. So if we were to create a print of this image, all of the white areas would need to be removed, and all of the dark areas would need to be left on the block. And if the opposite was true, and we wanted to create a reverse of this image, we would remove all the areas that are white and leave all the areas that are dark. This concept, of course, is incredibly important because it determines what we will cut from the block and what we will leave. Now, let's take a closer look at the tools that we'll use to remove portions of the linoleum from the block. This particular set of blades made by Speedball includes a handle and a variety of different blades. Some of the blades are designed to make precise cuts that don't remove a lot of linoleum, while some will make less precise marks but will remove more of the linoleum from the surface. The dull end of the blade can be inserted into the end of the handle and tightened to keep in place. Make sure that your blade is nice and tight inside and that you've placed the blade on the outer portion. Now it's time to start making cuts. Since we'll be printing on white paper with black block printing ink, we'll be removing the areas that we want to be wiped in the final print. It's important to make cuts away from your body. Linoleum block printing can become dangerous if you start making cuts towards your body or towards others that may be around you. It's also important to keep your hands away from the area that you're cutting. Occasionally, the blade will slide, and if you're not careful, you could hurt yourself. It might be helpful to slowly wiggle the blade as you make cuts. 
Linoleum can be very tough and hard to cut. A little bit of wiggling helps to remove the linoleum from the surface. For precise cuts, you may switch over to the blade. Using the blade, you can make initial cuts around areas that you want precise lines and edges. Then you can go back with a less precise blade and remove the linoleum completely, but leave a nice sharp edge around the areas that you've cut with the blade. Now, while lino cuts can be very precise and detailed, they don't have to be. In fact, simple prints are often very aesthetically pleasing. Keep in mind, however, that no matter how intricate or how simple your print is, you need to take your time with your cuts. This is a slow process that requires attention. You need to make sure that you don't accidentally cut areas that you need to leave raised. There's really not a way to fix an area once you've made a cut and removed portions of the linoleum. You may decide to leave some of your cuts visible. These areas will translate as texture in the final print. In this case, I'm trying to remove as much as possible. I want to create a clean print. But even with a clean print, there will be small imperfections. We'll discuss these in a moment at a later stage of the video. For now, we'll continue on with the cutting process. And as we do, we need to consider again the reverse of things, the areas that will be dark and the areas that will be light. In many cases, in order to see outlines, we may need to add additional light lines around some of the edges. We can create these light lines using a smaller and more precise blade. During the process, if you're curious how your final print will be translated, you could take a sheet of paper and lay it over the top and do a rubbing using a soft piece of graphite or perhaps some charcoal. All of the raised areas will come through in this rubbing, giving you an idea of what your print will look like. But ultimately, there's no way to really see or understand what your finished print will look like until we roll some ink on the surface. A few last cuts are made to remove the final pieces of linoleum. With these last pieces removed, we can use a brush to remove all of the excess smaller pieces of linoleum. If you don't have a brush, you can also use your hand and your fingers to remove all the small bits. Now we'll grab our block printing ink. Again, this is water-based block printing ink by Speedball. Next, we'll spread a small dab of the ink over the glass plate in the upper portion. Then we'll use our brayer, which is sometimes referred to as a roller, and move the ink around on the surface. We want to create an even distribution of ink on the brayer. We'll move the brayer in multiple directions to create an even distribution. You'll know when you have a good amount of ink on the surface when you start to hear a sticky sound or a tacky sound on the brayer. The ink is very sticky and you'll notice this sound immediately. Then we can go to our linoleum block and start spreading the ink. It may take a few passes to completely cover the block. Here again, we'll want to be listening for that tacky or sticky sound on the block. We'll grab a bit more ink and continue to apply it to the linoleum block surface. Again, you'll probably need to move the brayer in multiple directions to evenly cover the surface. We'll only bring down enough ink that we need for the particular application. We want to make sure that we don't apply too much ink to the block surface. We'll continue applying the ink until we have even coverage over the entire block. Now we can lay paper over the top of the block to create our first print. In this case, I've prepared a sheet of paper that measures 6 inches by 8 inches. 
which is just slightly larger than our 5x7 block. I'll lay it in place without moving it once I've placed it, and then use a wooden spoon to apply pressure on the back. This process is called burnishing. We're basically applying pressure to the back of the piece of paper, allowing the ink to transfer from the block to the paper itself. Now I'm using a wooden spoon for the burnishing process, but a baron can also be used. And of course if you're using a printing press, burnishing is not necessary. We can remove our first print and take a look at what we've got. Now since these are handmade prints, you can expect some imperfections. We can evaluate what we have with our first print. And here I can see that there's some areas that appear a bit blobby, for lack of a more technical term. This means that I've applied too much ink to the surface. So let's create another print. I'll go through the same steps, and then remove our second print. Now in this print, I haven't applied enough ink. The lines are much clearer and crisper, but there's not enough ink on the surface. These are two common mistakes. We'll continue to create a series of prints. And during the process, we'll find the right amount of ink and the right amount of pressure placed by the burnishing process. This one's a little bit better, but not quite there. After a few more prints, I was able to arrive at a series of suitable prints. Here's a look at one of them now. Linoleum block printing is a lot of fun. It's slow and tedious, but it always pays off in the end. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helped you out. Remember, if you want to learn more about drawing and painting and other art making techniques, visit thevirtualinstructor.com.